if you remember on the first night, I shared with you that um, during my visit here to the U.S. in the month of June, the Lord had shown me something about the U.S. that really stirred me like never before. You know, a few years ago, I remember we, Brother Neville and I, were speaking at our dear pastor Leonard Barber's church in St. Louis. And one day, during a worship, I saw into heaven, and the Lord Jesus seated with the council of the elders there. And they said, the destiny of the U.S. will be decided soon. This was about 10 years ago. So in the last 10 years, many, many wonderful prophets from within the U.S. have lifted up their voice to cry out to the nation about judgments to come, about calamities to come. How much did we pay heed to that is a big question mark. Secondly, the Lord gave a sample by just slow, little bit lifting up his hand of protection over the nation. And you saw what happened at the Twin Towers on 9-11. Four bunch of terrorists without much military training brought the entire U.S. down to her knees. Right? Okay. How long did it last? It? Just a couple of months. For, the, for two or three months, the whole nation, while mourning, seemed to turn back towards God. Because during that period, all the churches were flooded. But did it last it for long? The answer is no. In fact, from the year 2001, Till now, the nation has gone worse. Instead of going up towards God, it has gone down and down and down and down into the ditch. The climax of it all was the Supreme Court's verdict on June 26. You should never forget that day in your life, you know. Because that's the day the nation totally turned her back to God. It turned. Now, before that, I was in Costa Mesa on June the 19th for a conference among the Chinese people. And one afternoon at 5.43, as I was preparing my message, the Lord Jesus walked into the room and he came and stood by the sliding door, window, just overlooking the city of Costa Mesa. He never spoke any word, he was just looking. And I was wondering what he was looking. And then he motioned me, come, come and stand beside me. So when I came and stood beside the Lord, he said, he was still looking, this place will be torn like how a paper will be torn in two. When he said this place, at that moment I felt in my spirit, he was referring to the state of California. He said it will be torn in two like how a paper is torn in two. So I was shocked because we have wonderful friends in California. Our ministry base is in California. So many wonderful friends and churches in California, like Pastor Sweet, who's so sweet. <laughs> so, you know, to be absolutely honest and sincere with you, in the past, I have never ever felt so emotional like how I felt that day. In the past, it, it didn't bother me. If the Lord said, destroy, I'll say, yes, Lord, destroy them. Or I would just repeat the word 
like how the Lord told me to say it. You know, I never felt one or emotional about the whole thing. But this time, it was so different. I felt so emotional. I pleaded with the Lord, why Lord? Why? The Lord said, because she will tear my land. And I, I understood the Lord was referring to Israel. She will, she will tear my land. She will tear with her own hands the covenant she made with my people. So he said, warn her. So this is something that I've seen several times since the year 2013. In 2013, I was fasting for three days on the top of Mount Sinai. And on the third day, I was sitting on a rock, drinking my morning cup of tea and meditating the scriptures. And while I was meditating the scripture, for some reason I just lifted up my eyes to look. You know, sometimes when you want to deeply ponder, you look somewhere, don't you? So as I was lifted up my head to look at that direction, I saw a mighty angel come and stand about 20 feet away from me. And he said, this, will what, this is what will happen to the nation that will divide Israel. When he spoke that, a three-dimensional map of the U.S. appeared beside the angel. And he took his long, huge sword and stuck directly in the center of the U.S. and the continent broke into two. He said, this is what will happen. At that time, I didn't know that directly in the center where he stepped, there is a major earthquake fault line that according to geologists, if you have an earthquake to the magnitude of 10.5 and above, the entire North American continent will split, break up into two. So, then I asked the Lord. I was still shivering. I started shivering and trembling inside me. So I asked the Lord, Lord, what about your people? There are so many of your dear saints here. So the Lord told me, they will be warned to flee from this place. They will be protected like how Lot was protected. Angels have been dispatched to measure the land and to mark out the places for destruction. So after saying this, he just disappeared. And I was just shaken. And uh, on the 20th of June, at 6.45 in the evening, a mighty angel appeared in my room with a scroll in his hand. He unfolded the scroll and he began to read. These people, Americans, have been marked for destruction. And I thought, oh my God, not something repeated or said in succession. This has never happened to me before, you know. Never in a continuous succession of two days. And when he spoke those words, I saw angels, many of them, in many places all over the U.S., standing ready to execute destruction upon the nation. And I saw three places that were marked for massive destruction through earthquakes. I do not know what are the three places. I was just shown three places. So I did some Googling, you know, to find. <laughs> because it, the, the clue was massive earthquake. So if it's going to be a massive earthquake, 
I wanted to see where are the major fault lines in the US so that a massive earthquake can strike. And sure enough, I found three places. There are three great major earthquake fault lines in the US. One is in California, the San Andreas, and the other is in the middle of the US, and the 30 somewhere else. And then, again, I asked the same thing. Why? Why? Why must you all do this? So this angel told me, son of man, these people are wicked and obstinate, worse than Nineveh and Sodom and Gomorrah. So when I try to appeal, this is what they are saying. Why are you asking all this? Don't you know that these people are very wicked and very obstinate and they are worse than, they, than the people of Nineveh and Sodom and Gomorrah? So again, I appealed. Yeah, but they are still, because since he mentioned the word Sodom and Gomorrah, I, I picked that and I said, but Lot was safe. And Abraham prayed for righteous people. So there are righteous people in this nation. I told the angel, I can guarantee you, there are more than 50 righteous people. See, I put my faith in all of you. <laughs> Hoping that I was right. Am I right? Yes. All right. So I told them, I can guarantee you, there are more than 50 righteous people in this nation. And Abraham prayed for 50 people. And God said, if there be 50, I will not destroy them. So when I appealed that, then the angel said, warn these people. Only prayer and repentance can save, if it can be saved. So, and this thing really, you know, bothered me very much. I've never ever felt like this before. And after the meetings in Costa Mesa, Pastor Josuit and I, we were at Los Angeles airport, waiting to board a flight to Houston. So while we were waiting, and they made an announcement, okay, now boarding has started. So we were in the queue, waiting to board. At that moment, I heard a voice. Son of man, this city is going to be destroyed. So I turned around, and there was this mighty angel with a big weapon of destruction in his hand. And I saw this angel standing beside me. And at the same time, I also saw him standing outside the airport. You know, Los Angeles airport has got this space age type of uh, restaurant. What do you call that? Don't you have a name for that? Say again. Encounter. Sure, it was an encounter. Oh, no wonder he picked that place. Now I understand. This angel was standing beside me and standing outside near that encounter restaurant at the same time. It's, it's the same angel, but when he stood outside, he appeared so huge that his head touched the clouds, just like you read in Revelation chapter 10. And he had this huge weapon of destruction that looked like a sledgehammer. You know the one that Thor has? Like that. <laughs> and he said, this city will be destroyed by a great earthquake. And when he spoke that, 
I saw many angels under his leadership. And they all stood at a exactly where the earthquake fault line is going to be in Los Angeles. They all stood in one line with their hammers lifted up in their hands, waiting for an order from this captain. So once he gives an order, they'll all boom, they'll strike on the ground. So again, I appeal to this angel. Why? Why? Again, he repeated, don't you know that these people are worse than Sodom and Gomorrah? I was so shaken, you know. And all during the three-hour flight to Houston, this, this thing really troubled me very much. What made it worse was, why three days in a row I received something very similar, repeated three times. That further intrigued me and troubled me. Never have I heard, had anything like this in the past. Something repeated three times in three succession in a row in a short time. So I didn't know why. And I just, all throughout the journey, I was just pondering about this. And when we landed at Houston airport, we came out of the plane and we walked on the bridge. As soon as I stepped foot on Houston airport, I heard the voice. I thought, I think this angel followed me, you know. <laughs> he said, this city will be destroyed by a massive flood. I thought, oh no. I don't know anything about the history about Houston, you know. So while we were traveling from the airport to the city of Houston, the driver, the wonderful past, a minister of God who picked us, was talking with Pastor Joe Sweet. And he mentioned something about there was a great flood in the city. I was, I was still too occupied in my mind about what encounters that I had. I didn't quite pay attention to what both of them were talking about. But I just faintly heard the word flood. Okay. But when I got into the hotel room, I googled. Thank God for Google, you know. <laughs> You've got the whole world in your hands. <laughs> Are you old enough to know that song? Yeah. Okay. So now Google is like that. So I, when I Googled, there was records of history of massive flooding in Houston. Now, it didn't make me very pleasant, you know. I don't know why this time these things really bothered me very much. It has never bothered me in the past. Never. I just didn't know why. It bothered me so much until two days later when he saw in the news the nation, the highest legislation in the country has passed the same-sex marriage law. Then I understood why. See, your judges are not just Supreme Court judges but are judges of the land. And what they pronounce, they have put a curse on their own country. And by opening a floodgate. So first was the judges of the land. Second was the king of the land. As soon as the Supreme Court passed the bill, President Obama went on the air to second and to champion the cause of the passing of the bill. And the whole White House was lighted up in the rainbow colors of the LGBT community. You know, the White House is the king's house. It's supposed to be the representation before God. And what are they showing to God? 
It's like showing the fish sign, you know. I'm sorry to say that, but that's exactly what you've done. You show the finger sign to God by, by protracting the rainbow colors on the White House. That is gross sin. Gross sin. When I saw all this, then I understood why the Lord spoke three times in succession, which means things will come speedily. Speedily. Destruction will come speedily. So all your prayers can save you and your family. But that which has been determined upon the nation will come. Like what Brother Neville has been sharing these past three days about things that have been determined. Like what Daniel the prophet interpreted the dream that Nebuchadnezzar saw. He said, the thing has been decreed by the watchers. Decreed means done, passed. It will certainly come to pass. So, and then I still didn't give up, you know. I still didn't give up. So I wanted to give another one last shot. So, last week of July and the first week of August, I spoke at a conference in Maryland. So, in the meeting, Again, I knelt down before the Lord and I cried out. I said, Lord, is there something that can be done? Then suddenly, like a light went out inside me. Oh, Nineveh. Anyway, when the people all repented, God spared Nineveh. Anyway. So I took it up before the Lord. Lord, I now have an argument for you. So I brought up my argument before the Lord. Look, Lord, your word says that Jonah pronounced a judgment upon Nineveh and when the nation repented, you spat. Lord, there are so many prayer gatherings and prayer movements in this country. They will all pray, Lord. So I thought I won my argument, you know. Then the Lord told me, you know what's the difference? He asked me. You know what's the difference between the prayer movement in this country and what happened at Nineveh? The difference is this. Nineveh, from the king, right up to the smallest baby, fasted and prayed. So the Lord asked me, will the king of this country do that? So I, I rest my case. Will he? I had no more arguments to put before the Lord. But when Abraham prayed, the Bible says, when God sent fire down upon Sodom and Gomorrah, he remembered Abraham. And because of Abraham's prayer, though there were not ten righteous people, at least Abraham's family was saved. Because of Abraham's prayer. So when you put your life right, you consecrate your life. Like what Nabal has shared, by when? By when? And when is that? September 20th, very good. In fact, I tell many of my um, close uh, uh, associates, said, consecrate a 40-day fast. If you count up to there, there's a 40-day period. Say, give yourself to 40-day fast. Pray, consecrate, make a fresh dedication before God. Renew your vows. Renew your covenants. Renew your dedication. Whatever you have missed, put it right again. This time, when you repair the altar, 
it should stay repaired. It should not be broken again. Because you don't have another opportunity to repair the altar. One last opportunity to repair the altar. So if you do that, then you and your household shall be saved. When the destruction is going to come, the angels that went out to deliver Loth and his family, they will come to you. And they will tell you, now flee from this region. Flee. Just like they told Loth, flee. Flee. They will tell you when to do that.